Hello dear students, most welcome in this YouTube channel. We are studying a chapter number 4 and the chapter is about the condensers. In previous lecture, we have discussed about the heat transfer of the condenser. But today, we will talk about the cooling tower. Dear students, when we talk about the water cooled condenser regarding its use in refrigeration plants, so there, the steady supply of cooling water is must necessary to available. And the reason, we have already explained that natural sources of water are usually limited. And we may not waste such amount of water circulated in condenser again and again. And also once the water passes through condenser, it gets sensible heat and the temperature of water rises. So, then we must arrange to cool the heated water after it passes through the condenser and then return it to condenser. So, simply the cooling tower is the system that accomplishes this process. It transfers heat from the condenser water to the atmospheric air. Most of the heat transfer is accomplished by the evaporation of a small percentage of the condensing water into the atmosphere. The heat required for evaporation is taken from the bulk of condenser water, thus cooling it. Water from the condenser is pumped to the top of the cooling tower and spread down into the sump of tower. The tower has internal buffels, is also called a fill, which breaks up the water into fin droplets when the water splashes under the fill. That arrangement improves the heat transfer between the condenser water and atmospheric air. The cooled water collects in a basin and is then recirculated to the condenser. In addition to the water loss due to the evaporative cooling, there are two other causes of water loss. First one is the drift loss and it is occurs due to the wind carrying water away with the air and a second one is the blue down loss and it is occurred due to the draining off and discarding a small portion of the water from the basin. This must be done at regular intervals in order to prevent a continual accumulation of minerals that would otherwise occur from the evaporation and drift losses. These losses require provision for makeup water and this is done by providing a makeup water supply to the basin and it is controlled by a float wall which maintains the water level in the cooling tower. And now the capacity of cooling tower and spray ponds. The capacity of cooling towers and spray ponds depends upon the amount of evaporation of water that takes place. The amount of evaporation of water in turn depends the following some factors. Number 1. The amount of water surface exposed to the air. The more surface area of water exposed to the air means that the more evaporation of water takes place, while the less surface area of water exposed to the air refers the less evaporation of water in cooling tower. Okay. Number 2. The length of the exposure time. And number 3, the velocity of air passing over the water droplets form in the cooling tower. And number 4, the wet bulb temperature of the atmospheric air. It may be noted that when the wet bulb temperature of the air decreases, the air can absorb spray ponds increases as the wet bulb temperature of air decreases. The dry bulb temperature of air has less influence on their capacities because air absorbs little sensible heat from water. However, the amount of sensible heat that the air can absorb increases as the dry bulb temperature difference between the water and air increases. And now, types of cooling tower. The cooling tower are mainly divided according to their method of air circulation into the following two groups. Number one natural draft cooling tower and number two mechanical draft cooling tower number one natural draft cooling towers 
Natural draft cooling towers is the equipment where the atmospheric air circulates and cools down the hot water of the condenser. It is divided further in two parts. Part number one is the atmospheric natural draft spray type. Part number two is the atmospheric natural draft splash deck type. And now a part number one atmospheric natural draft spray type. The atmospheric natural draft spray type cooling tower is as like a box shaped structure with lowers. The lowers allow the atmospheric air to pass through the tower but slant down towards the inside of the tower to retain water in it. The framework and lowers are usually made of steel. The size of the cooling tower depends upon the capacity of unit. The atmospheric natural draft spray type cooling towers should be located in open space or on the roof of a building where the air can blow freely through the cooling tower. In this type of cooling tower, warm water from the condenser is pumped to a spray header provided at the top of a tower. It is sprayed down into the tower through the nozzles. So the heat transfer from water to air is dependent upon the surface of water exposed to the air stream. Therefore, a spray nozzle having finer spray patterns is essential for good performance of the cooling tower. It may be noted that the finer spray exposes more water surface to air. However, if the spray is too fine and too much, water is blown away. The water spray blown away by the air is called drift. The drift increases water loss in the tower but does not affect the cooling action. Part 2 Atmospheric Natural Draft Splash Deck Type This type of cooling tower is similar to a spray type cooling tower except only that it contains decking also called fill and it is made from redwood, hollow tiles, ceramic, metal sheets or plastic. Many splash deck towers do not imply nozzles. The water splashes on the digging from the holes in the bottom of a water box on the top of a tower. The object of decking is to increase the rate of heat transfer by exposing a large amount of varied surface to the air. The digging also helps to break up the water into small droplets and slows down the fall of water to the bottom of towers. This type of cooling tower is 20 to 30 percent more efficient than the spray type for the same size and same quantity of water. And number two, mechanical draft cooling towers. The mechanical draft cooling towers are similar to atmospheric natural draft cooling towers except only that the fans are used to force the air through them. These towers may be used either propeller or centrifugal fans. The mechanical draft cooling towers have the following main advantages and disadvantages over the atmospheric natural draft cooling towers. So first, the advantages. Number one, the mechanical draft cooling towers are smaller in size than natural draft cooling towers of the same capacity because the large volume of forced air increases the cooling capacity. Number two, the cooling capacity of mechanical draft cooling towers can be controlled by controlling the amount of forced air. Number three, the mechanical draft cooling towers can be located inside the building because they do not depend upon the atmospheric air. And now, the disadvantages. The mechanical draft cooling towers require additional power to operate the fans. Number two, the maintenance of fans, motors and controls increases the operating cost. The mechanical draft cooling towers may be either forced draft or induced draft as discussed in the following articles. Number 1. Forced draft cooling towers. Number 2. Induced draft cooling towers. And no number 1. Forced draft cooling towers. In forced draft cooling tower, a fan forces the air through the tower in its operation. The warm water from the condenser is sprayed at the top of the tower through the spray nozzles. 
the air is forced upward through on the side near the bottom to the tower. The condenser warm water is cooled by means of evaporation as discussed earlier. The effectiveness of the cooling tower may be improved by increasing the height of the tower, area of water surface exposed to air or the velocity of air. The air velocity is from 75 to 120 meter per minute is recommended with a flow of 90 to 120 cubic meter per minute per ton of refrigeration capacity. And now, a part number second, induced draft cooling towers. In induced draft cooling tower, the fan sucks the air through the tower. The induced draft cooling towers are similar to forced draft cooling towers except only that the fans are located at the top instead of the bottom and draw the air upward through the tower. Dear students, that was the discussion about cooling tower and types of cooling towers. I hope you will have understood. If you have learned something, please like this video lecture and share it with your friends. And also, if you have not subscribed our channel yet, that's, then subscribe it and stay with us for more videos.